Hey, what is happening? We are here to do a haul. This is gonna be our only haul this week because as this video is out, we're actually currently in Texas. We are, but we're sourcing it up. It's like time travel. I know, and hopefully like, we're finding all kinds of great stuff. Our living room is behind us, but we're actually in Texas while you're, yes. we're, you're viewing this. It is very true. So I've just been working to try to get a bunch of listings drafted while we're gone this next week, or right now, as it were. Um, but you wanted to go to the bins on Friday, so mm -hmm. we ended up going to the bins, and I got like 40 pieces. It was, I had a really good day at the bins, got a ton of stuff. You filled up a cart, got yep. some cool stuff. And then you talked me into going yard sailing. She hates yard sailing, guys. Here's the thing. For the most part, she used to be so restrictive about what she would purchase that the chances of finding some good vintage at a garage sale are, are pretty slim, right? You gotta go hit like a million of them to get like two things. So for her, the reward was not always worth the time and the getting up early and the chauffeuring around because, you know, she drives. Well, and I have to find all the addresses because yeah. you're not capable of doing anything. I can't do a map. <laughs> I'm not capable of doing anything. Just listen yeah. to her. So it's a lot of work on my my part. Um, but I like garage sales because you guys know I really love to sell hard goods as well. And they're harder to come by at the bins. Yes, I do find some things, but garage sales is like are like the best places to find, um, you know, yeah, good hard goods at good prices. It's tough though, because the return on investment time-wise is really tough. And this week was proof of that because honestly, the only thing that made it worth our time was two sales that we went to. Mm -hmm. And one was the very first freaking sale. Yep. And I got like 30 pieces for $5, which averaged out to about 17 cents per piece. So yeah, amazing. But had we not gone to that particular sale- And it was my $5 to be fair. That's true. But I feel like that's a uh, that's good the cost. That's always the cost of doing business is that Katie gets whatever she gets at garage sales for free because I always pay for it. Unless it was like a, a large amount. But $5 for being driven around all day is pretty good. She called herself the passenger princess because she didn't even know where we were going. She had no clue. She didn't have to look anything up. So it was a pretty sweet deal for five bucks in my opinion. Yeah, I but, guess. Between that one stop and then one other stop where you found your one big item, I mean, it could have been a complete waste mm -hmm. of our like it was five not, hours of time. Well, we didn't go five hours, but it was not a uh, it was not a great ROI for me. But I did get a couple of things that I'm going to show that were worth it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Jury's still out for me, even though I did score big uh on, on my little score anyway so we're going to go ahead and show you highlighted pieces from both the bins and the garage sales so what do you got i think we should start with this big thing so we can get out of the way um so this one is something i used to buy and sell these fairly frequently at least whenever i found them i haven't found one in many years this was leaning in a woman's garage at one of the last garage sales we went to and katie saw it it wasn't necessarily for sale. I asked her if it was for sale and she's like, yeah, you know, okay. It's been here since the nineties. I haven't moved it. She had it when she was a kid, the whole thing. She initially said she was looking for $75. That was a little spendy, but I did offer 50 and she took 50. And then I have to say the woman started to cry as we were leaving because it was her childhood toy. Um, it's this, it's a vintage Japanese pachinko machine. If you guys know, you know, um, they are like pinball machines, tabletop pinball machines, but they're heavy. You can put it down, Katie. It probably weighs about 50 pounds. It's real heavy. Um, and they're usually found in pieces or the back of the machine is missing the software and all that kind of stuff. This one is complete, although it's very dirty. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't like steal it from this lady as she's crying. I offered many times. I'm like, I don't need to take it. It's okay. You can give. Me, you can keep it. Like, I, I ran with I, it to the car. I didn't want. I felt so bad. Um, but she's like, No, no, no. I'm glad it's going. You know, to somebody that knows what it is and appreciates it. So it's not going to me, but it will go to a collector. So that being said, I paid fifty dollars for it. I will list it locally and for shipping. Shipping is a bitch. I'm not gonna lie. It's very difficult to ship. They're glass. They're heavy. There's lots of sticky outy parts. But it could sell for $400 or more. Um, usually I will list them both per, you know, for local pickup and I don't do local pickup on anything, but I'll sell it for 250 local and save the nightmare of shipping or I'll ship it. And of course I'll charge for shipping. I will probably charge $100 for shipping. I'll put flat $100. And um, those that have sold, you can see very high shipping rates. People generally do calculated shipping. I'll do 100. It shouldn't cost any more than that. And then if it's closer, then obviously I would make some money. Well, it's also the time. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to it's an hour be a time long, suck to yeah. pack it up. It's an hour long process to pack it up and to pack it up safely. So um, anyway, that being said, I'm very happy with this purchase for 50 bucks. I haven't found one in probably at least five to seven years to purchase. Um, 
and I like them. They sell well. They're not, there aren't a lot of them around and a lot of them are not working. She said this one is working. I have not cleaned it up and tested it yet. Um, but when it has all of the parts and nothing is missing, the chances of it working is, is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So. All right, so the name of the game right now when it comes to uh, men's and women's fashion and what people are looking for is Y2K. So that is definitely like where my focus has been. I mean, of course, I'm gonna love it if I find 90s, 80s, 70s vintage stuff, but right now Y2K is what's hot and what's moving fastest. So I saw this in the bins. All my stuff's on hangers right now because I have already gotten it all ready to photograph so I can work on photograph right when I get home from our trip. Um, but I grabbed this from the bins. Now it looks very Ed Hardy-ish. It has that kind of uh, style. Mm -hmm. um, it is not Ed Hardy. On the back, it does say infamous, I believe is what I was able to figure out, but it does say. Oh yeah, it does I'm almost say infamous. Positive. Yep. Um, this tag on it, I looked at the RN number. It is just a, an all style um, tag from that company that does the all style apparel. Uh, but I think this is like a skater brand, like the, the infamous, um, but you know, with the right keywords and everything, you know, I am going to do, I mean, I would call it a little bit of keyword spamming in like my, um, eBay, I go into the themes and I will put Ed Hardy in there and I will put, um, what's the other, uh, big brand that's like popular right now. Anyway, whatever. I will put some of those brands in there because some of the people are going to be searching those names. They're, they are also looking for this, just the style mm -hmm. in general. As long as you don't put it in the title, it's not keyword spamming. No, I won't. And it's not, you know, it's not like some people who like do it with band t-shirts and they put all these different bands. Like that's, that's bull. But anyway, um, but I think I should be able to get a good 30 bucks for this. I'm going to pay the dollar. So the next thing I'm going to show, I got at the same garage sale as the Pachinko. I paid $5 for it. And I'm torn whether I'm going to keep it or whether I'm going to sell it. And uh, I can get about $50 to $55 for it. Crystal um, might try to steal it from you. I know. But, okay, so this is the box. <laughs> it's a little Ripley or, or Sancho. It does look a lot like Sancho because it is a full. It full looks more like dog. Sancho. Uh, but the brand is Mark Tatro. I think these were sold at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something. I, I saw them. But it is a designer brand. It's got a little beanie. And then it has a little crossbody purse, and it's got, I don't know. I don't know Very if I'm going to be able to let go. This is not my style, even though I think it's adorable. And it's new. Everything in it is new. Um, it's like a little gift box. The gift tag is still on it. I don't think it has a retail price on it. But I'm sure it was like Very 30 cute. or 40 bucks new. I think I can still get that for it. Um, I paid $5. Anyway, it's really cute. Yeah. Crystal, you should try to get in there. All right, next up, I got this at the bins. Um, no, actually, I might have gotten this. I got this at a garage sale yesterday. I paid a dollar for it. Uh, but um, not vintage. But every time I find any of these, like, uh, nature tees, these um, national park tees that have, like, a good graphic on them, they always sell. They always sell. I'm going to be able to easily sell this for $25. Um, bucks and uh, no problem. It's a nice big size. Uh, this is probably from like late 2000s based on the Delta tag. Uh, but the, these are easy. If you can find them for a buck, definitely pick them up because they're just really good filler for your store. Um, don't pass those up. You you know that these are popular when you start seeing them in like Walmart and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Vacation tours tees. Yep. So I, I actually have this set up here in the living room because um, I'm taking photos of it and wanted to make sure it was complete and it worked. Uh, moving the camera is too tricky for me to show you. So I'm just going to show you the box of what I picked up. So I grabbed this at the bins yesterday. There's many different versions of these. This is the Disney, Walt Disney World monorail. And it is, uh, it comes with the tracks and it moves around the tracks and it talks and it gives the little uh, authentic monorail um, speech that if you've ridden before, you've heard it before. There, again, there's many different versions of these. Some sell for more than others. You can go turn it on. Just turn it on. I'll, uh, hold on. Just push the. Do the little switch to make it move. It's on the side, down at the bottom of the side. Like the fact that you were able to pick up this body, this raggedy box that had all these loose pieces in it. And, and everything no was open. I, I took it, I'm like thinking I'll sell it for parts if it wasn't complete. It's missing <laughs> one little piece of track but it still works and goes all the way around. And you know, the, the, the oval is just a little bit shortened. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was pretty cute. I'm gonna list it around 200. Some of them sell for a lot more, some sell for less. Get that switch on the side. Wait, it goes both ways. 
Uh, so I bought it at the bins, not super heavy, but I probably paid five bucks for it, maybe six. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, it was really fun. I got to put it together, but I like that kind of stuff because, you know, it's fun. It's like playing with toys. All right, next up, I grabbed this at the bins. This was like the last rotation we were on. I actually found a ton of stuff in that last rotation. Sometimes you wait for like the, the uh, you're like one more rotation and then you find nothing and you're like, oh, I just wasted the last half hour. I could have been already home. Uh, but I've had a whole bunch in the last rotation and then I found this t-shirt and I had it like, I had all this stuff on my arms and then I had it in my hand and we got back to the cart and I'm going through the stuff and I'm like, where is it? I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I thought I dropped it and I was super bummed about it, which it's not even like a super, it's not even like, this it's not even a valuable right? shirt, but if you know me, like I like this nerdy stuff, like science Olympiad team. I mean, I did, I did like the sciencey nerd, nerdy stuff. I'm um, shocked. Odyssey of the Mind uh, thing when, when I was a kid, so um, I like it. But, you know, I can probably sell it for 25, 30 bucks. But it's just cute. It's got it's a cute cool. little monkey on yeah. it. All right, what do I have? Oh, okay. Uh, I got these at the same garage sale where Katie uh, picked up a ton of stuff for $5. So this cost Those me. Those included. These included. So these were under $5. So these they are. They were 17 cents. They were 17 cents. These are Nike high tops. Uh, they're considered a, they're, they're like a pastel, like a retro version of something, uh, uh, but they're not vintage. They came out in like 2019 or something like that. They're a little bit dirty, but I can easily clean these up. And once I clean them up, this colorway is not super popular. These are women's. Um, I suppose they could be worn by a man with small feet too. But the pastel colorway is not super popular, and I think I can get at least 75 bucks for these, maybe more. I don't normally pick up sneakers, but I You say I it's liked... not popular, but you can sell it for 70, or you mean there's not a lot of them? There's not a lot of them. Okay. I was like, these aren't even popular at all. I can sell them for 75 dollars. I meant there's not a lot of them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's a lot of that style, but not 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 with the pink swoosh and anyway. Yeah, so they're cool. I think I can get like 75 bucks for them, maybe even a little bit more. They are selling for like 150 new still, so... Very nice, very nice. All right, next up, I know I'm showing you guys lots of stuff that's not really that valuable, but the reality is like when you're able to buy stuff for super cheap, I mean, if your cost is a dollar and then you can sell it for 20, 25, like that's a huge um, flip. Anyway, um, you know, I've been talking about like crop tops and stuff, so this is not vintage. I got this shirt, it was not a crop top and there's nothing wrong with it, but I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get this and I'm gonna cut it off and make it a crop top because I do think it'll actually sell it faster Mm -hmm. um, not being vintage, but it's like great color, just super cute. I sold a ridiculous amount, like five or six pieces this last week that were all beach pieces, like either surfing or sailing or somehow beach related. So just based on my own anecdotal evidence, I haven't done a bunch of research into it. I've been selling a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, so to me, it's worth it. And I'll be able to sell this for 20, 25 bucks. I'm betting it's a lot of people that are so sick of winter right now. <laughs> Yeah, that are looking true. for spring and summer. That's true. Um, that's why this, there's a reason why April is one of the most popular vacation times for people to go like to tropical places. Yeah, which is why we're going to Texas. <laughs> I know, it's funny. Uh, okay, so uh, I picked this up, not because it's worth a ton of money, but I picked it up because when Alexis was here, we talked about this brand of shoes, Ofos. Hey, look, Alexis. Uh, so I didn't know anything about the brand of shoes. I think I kind of knew that they were a bolo, but again, you know, I sell a lot of vintage. I don't sell a lot of current stuff. So sometimes these brands pass me by. However, this is one of those really nicely made heavyweight sweatshirts. And I got it at the bins. It's, it, I washed it. I can probably get like $60, $70 for it. And I that's pretty good. $2 at the bins. So. That's pretty good. All right. Next up. Here's another piece that's not worth anything. LOL. Um, I got this at the bins and um, this is actually, once I looked it up, it's a Target brand. It was sold at Target. Um, there's the tag. It's not vintage, uh, but it's a really cool uh, denim jacket, denim trucker jacket. You can see the little kiss mark there. But then the back has New York 1969 Stonewall Riot 628.69. Like this is just such a cool jacket. Now, when you go look it up, there's a ton of them out there. Um, so this is probably the comps, one of Target's pride collections, yeah. I'm assuming. So uh, the comps are like, I could sell it for $15 plus shipping. Like it's not anything oh, I'm gonna make any money at. Keep it then. So I'm actually gonna keep it. It's not something I'm gonna sell, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's not something I'm gonna wear. I, I don't really wear um, denim jackets. I'm not wear it. 
but it's a good size and I'll either let Vicki have it or I was thinking of bringing it with me uh, to Texas because there's a couple people that we're going to be with that might be potentially be wanting to wear it. Um, but yeah, yeah, Vicki wants it. She can have it. I don't know if she'll wear it or not. I might. But uh, it's size 2X. Yes, it's, it's not oversized. enormous, but it's a nice oversized. So Vicki might want to wear it. So anyway, just sometimes it's just cool to find uh, neat stuff at the bins that you can keep for yourself. It doesn't all have to be about selling. All right, I found this at the bins, and um, you guys know I'm a sucker for kids' clothes, right? Cute vintage kids' clothes, but this is dead stock with the tags. So it's this cute, cute little sailor outfit. Look at the look at the back over here, and then it's overalls. The overalls are really cute. Look at the little um, and they're fleece. They're like a little uh, sweatshirt material, yeah. and then the little hat. Little rabbit. Like I can't even. <laughs> they're so cute. So it's a little, uh, you know, made, made in Thailand, but this is like 80s, probably, uh, maybe even early 90s. But it's a little bigger size. It's not newborn anyway. It's 18 months. So if you have a little one in your life that you want vintage clothing for, let me know. I probably will only get like 35 bucks for it, but it's yeah. super cute. All right, next up, you guys know how I feel about my um, vintage tech stuff. And so this is from 2005, close enough. Uh, 19 years, not 20. Uh, but I picked this up at the bins. I found like a whole bunch of like a pretty much brand new um, t-shirts. Uh, a bunch of them were like radio station tees. Um, and then this one that is Windows Server System. Uh, it is staff from 2005. So, um, you know, nothing crazy, but I think I can sell it for like 30 bucks. It's on the Delta tag. Um, and remember, I always tell you guys, this is how you learn your tags. Um, this is from 2005 and that's the Delta tag uh, that was being used at the time when this came out. So just a, a fun little Windows t-shirt. All right, this may be my, no, it is probably my most valuable find in a while that I found at the bins, but it's also my, uh, maybe my most valuable find of the week. So this is the brand. Katie, you're gonna have to help me here. It is made in Italy. It says Montana. Montana, but it says, what's that further down there? This is Claude Montana, Paris. Okay, so Claude Montana in Paris. It is vintage. This is probably 80s or 90s. Um, look that brand up, and it is Couture. It's Couture Vintage, which I was not familiar with the brand at all. So this is a really pretty bright purple uh, wool jacket. It's a little bit of an avant-garde, like off-center uh, neckline, but then it has this really cool like shawl part that goes over the shoulder. Uh, it is small, maybe even an extra small, and I, but I think I can get like five hundred dollars for it. Wow! Um, I mean, obviously, I'd accept offers, but if you look at this brand and you look at the top comps for jackets and coats, the sell through is really good. There's not a ton of them, but they do sell. Oh, careful there, lady! And they sell for um, upwards of, of four or five hundred dollars. So, yep, I'm pretty happy with that one. Indeed. All nice right, find. so. One of the things is last week and this week, I have been picking up a ridiculous amount of hoodies. I do think one of the things is that a lot of the t-shirt bros and people kind of overlook the hoodies at the bins, unless it's something super obvious, just because, um, you know, it weighs more. Um, but we're also getting into summer season here and a lot of those guys do pop up strictly. True, true. So nobody's buying sweatshirts but if it's but i'm still gonna buy them which i mean it is it is potentially going to be problematic because i got a lot last week and then this week with those 30 pieces i got at that one garage sale a ton of them were these giant heavy sweatshirts and hoodies um and then same thing with the stuff i was buying at the bins um and so you know i've shown you guys a lot of like kind of really kind of lower um priced items and part of that is because i mean i can only show you so many of the same brand of hoodie um, and where I'm trying to do like 15 uh, separate pieces. But anyway, I wanted to show this one because it was funny at the bins. Generally at the bins, everybody's pretty respectful. Like there's, at our bins anyway, nobody's like getting into fights for the most part. I've only ever had in the past like one guy that kind of was a little too pushy and got too much in my space. Vicky has, says that happens to her more often. I think part of it is her tolerance is a little bit lower. Oh, I'm gonna throw elbows. Lower than mine. Um, whereas I'm like, you know, it's fair game. If everybody's diving in there, you're going to have a little bit of jostling and moving around. But for the most part, nobody's grabbing anything out of your hands. Nobody's like trying to steal stuff from you. It's just whoever grabs something first, right? And so I was grabbing all this stuff. It was a great first bin. I had found a bunch of stuff in this one bin. And then I grabbed this hoodie and this kid next to me, uh, he had to have been a high school. I think there were some of them that were skipping school. 
this kid next to me grabs the sleeve after I already had it in my hand and he will not let go. And I'm pulling on it and he's pulling on it. And I turn to look at him and he goes, oh, can you just please let me have it? And I'm like, no. I'm like, it's in my hands. And he just looked kind of sad and walked away. And I'm like, yeah, that's not cool, man. So I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> I was just like, I'm keeping You're it. You're like, it's mine, bitch. And then I went back and looked, and it's not anything crazy, uh, but it's definitely like the Y2K style. It says Elysium. It's not like any kind of crazy brand or something like that. Like, I can still make some money on it. I should be able to, to sell it for like 40 bucks just because of even just the style. Um, and it's this really nice fade to it. But honestly, I was like, I don't even care what it is. I'm I don't care if it. I take it outside I'm keeping and burn it. it. You're not getting yeah, because the thing is, it's a, it's a, it's hopefully like so, a little bit of like a corrective action towards him. Like, I mean, he's young. It's like you just don't do that. You don't grab something out of somebody else's hands and then expect them to give it to you. Like, that's not cool, man. You gotta. There's so many times where me and somebody else will grab something at the same time, and it's like I don't let go and be like, oh, sorry. Like, but if it's same. in my hand, you don't grab it from me. It's not cool. Like, that's just not the way you act when you're at the bench. How do you think I would have reacted to that? Um, I mean, you probably think you probably would have done the same thing. I mean, I was direct with them. I was like, I kind of laughed and I'm like, no, it's in my hand. I wasn't going to give it to him. And then he walked away. So I was like, take that punk. Anyway, um, but I like the style. And again, it's nothing special, but I've got it. So when we were out garage sailing yesterday, one of the garage sales we fell upon is our friend Diana's. Uh, we didn't know it was her house. Huge garage sale, by the way. She had some amazing stuff there. She is a reseller. She watches this channel. She's actually going on the cruise with us in a yeah. couple of weeks as well. Uh, and her husband is a um, postal worker, uh, not in our in our neighborhood. He is well. He's not ours, but no, he's, he close. Does, he's he, close to us. He subs and he different routes. Yeah, and he subs around here. Anyway, super nice people. I she had some amazing stuff. A lot of it was big stuff that she had purchased cheaply that she didn't want to ship. And I looked at a lot of it. I, I swear, everything she had there was stuff I probably would have purchased as well. But I also did not want to ship yeah, big pieces. <laughs> I also didn't like some big, really big pieces. Anyway. I just want to say, hi, Diana. It was good running into you yesterday. Um, okay, so sometimes I source in vintage Facebook groups as well. Uh, I will sell in them and source in them. And this was something I sourced. It was $20 uh, delivered. And it is a vintage 1980s Canon is the brand uh, comforter. I have washed this already. It is a twin size comforter. It's like twin full, twin slash full. This is made famous. It is not the full house one that a lot of people have heard me talk about before, but this one is featured in Stranger Things. This is an 11. Uh, 13 is her name. Is that her name? 13? 11. 11. You just said 11. You I said, said it right the first time. I said time. it right the first time. Uh, so it's an 11's bedroom. So it was made famous by Stranger Things. So I paid $20 for this. I did recognize it when they listed it. And I will probably list it for about $150. And will I use Stranger Things in the themes? Yes. Will I use it in the title everywhere but eBay? Yes. I just will not use it in the title for eBay. Um, but if you look at Canon Stranger Things, you'll see that that's how people are advertising it too. Yeah, you want them to be able to, to find it. Um, all right, next up. So like I said, I went to, we went to this garage sale. The guy had so many clothes. We were and the I first was, people there too. We were the first people, yeah, we got there right when he started. He had so many clothes and he was a total surfer dude, which makes sense because there were a bunch of surfer hoodies. I don't think I'm showing you any of the surfer hoodies, which I love. I always sell my surfer hoodies. Um, anyway, uh, so I well, first I was going through the t-shirts real quick. I found like maybe six or seven of them and I went up and I was like, how much are you charging? And he's like, eh, 25 cents. I don't know. Fill a bag. 20. I don't, I don't really care. So I, I figured out real quick, oh, he's barely charging anything. So then I went back through the t-shirts again and then I started going through all the hoodies and everything and that's why I just made this ridiculous pile and it ended up being 17 cents a piece uh, but it was everything literally five dollars for a falling apart huge extra large black garbage bag stuffed because I had all these really heavy hoodies but it's pretty much all y2k stuff so I got a lot of Nike stuff a lot of Nike hoodies and t-shirts and it's on this gray tag which is uh mid-2000s mid like 2000 like I think like three or four to 2008 somewhere around there um, anyway, and this is a Nike Air Force One, Nike Air Air Force One t-shirt in fantastic condition. Um, and I looked this up and I should definitely be able to sell this, I mean, for at least 30 bucks. Um, but just seriously, so many Nike t-shirts, like Levi's t-shirts, like everything Y2K, great sizes. I think this one is a 2XL. So really good sizes. I don't know who they belong to because that dude was skinny. I know. Some of the hoodies are like 2 Unless he just really liked the big oversized. Yeah, but he was like a super surfer dude. Like He, he was, was like, like, yeah, man, whatever. Bro, cool. Cool, bro. 
He was like my age or older. He was, even. but he had the super laid back surfer attitude. Uh, but yeah, I got a ton of Nike t-shirts, um, 17 cents a piece, just ridiculous. So one garage sale, this is the one item I think I paid too much for, but uh, it was an impulse buy at a garage sale. Anyway, it is uh, the brand St. John, you know, that uh, Santana knit clothing, usually old lady clothing. Um, you know, it's like a step down from Chanel, but it is high end. So this is St. John purse. It is leather. It's patent leather. It's off white. It does have a chain. Uh, it is real. It's it, nobody's faking St. John. That's the thing. It's it's not a cool designer piece, even though it is designer. People don't fake it, so you don't have to worry about authenticity, um, like you would with I don't know Gucci or Chanel or whatever. Yeah. Even though the prices are similar on items, so retail this was probably four or five hundred dollars. There are some discoloration marks on it that I'm going to try to get out with some magic eraser. Um, hopefully I can get those out. And if I can, I think I can get about a hundred, 150 for this. I paid 40. That was not a good buy. Um, that's not a really good flip on money for me. Um, but whatever, it'll probably draw some we different eyes great to luck with I, I wasn't, I was almost like a desperation buy because <laughs> I think I had only bought one thing before that. So, yeah. All right. Next up again, go back to that garage sale and the Y2K stuff. Um, this was one of the first pieces that I found because I looked at the t-shirts first. And as soon as I saw the South Pole, I immediately like was looking around, looking to see if I could see any denim anywhere because that's where the real money's at right now when it comes to South Pole. And most money you're going to get is going to be South Pole jeans, the baggy jeans. Or look shorts. Them up. Or jorts. But, but the jeans are going to be the, the highest value if you go and look at mm -hmm. the solds, look at the sell-through rate. The sell-through rate's insane. It's the like a 700% sell-through like rate. If you find I mean, it, obviously you can't sell through more than 100%. But Yeah, and the more like uh, ornate, like embroidered and ridiculous they look, the more money you're going to make with them. But even the plain baggy jeans are going to sell for 100 bucks. He didn't have any jeans. Um, but And I don't know what the deal is with t-shirts. I haven't looked really, but it's nice big oversized um, I'm sure it's a, I can get like 40 bucks for this, maybe more. I have the to funny look. thing is, is two years ago, you would have, nobody would have picked this up. You wouldn't have taken it for free. I wouldn't have. When I very first started selling in 2016, I was picking up South Pole a little bit and it was selling okay. Um, it wasn't crazy. It was like kind of the very tail end of anybody buying it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this I saw the, the South Pole. JC Penny, um, urban line yeah. like, in, like that I would not have even picked this up like it's like echo and and roca wear and stuff like yep. that this was stuff that nobody was paying money to resell to buy to resell ever in my history of doing this but Ed this, Hardy was but not this but the South Pole will come back into play here in a little bit towards the end of this uh, haul all right so this is a brand that I learned about from our friends uh, Angela and Lisa, who we affectionately call Angelisa, they are another fun find on Instagram. If you're not following them, you should. Uh, they it, teach me new brands all the time yeah. that I would not have known they, about before. They don't really do vintage. They do more like high-end current high -end, stuff. Mm -hmm. so. And a lot of menswear. And, and that's not my, my niche at all. So this is the brand. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. They do a lot of bags and, and things like that. It's outdoor wear. That's the brand. It's got a little logo on the sleeve, a little sleeping fox. And this is just a really nice uh, sweater that I found at the bins. Mm -hmm. So I paid $2 for this at the bins. It should sell for about 100 Yeah. They know a lot of brands that you will have never heard of. Uh, and then you find out like, oh, this is what the rich people buy. They aren't, they don't care about um, having a label. They don't care about branding and like the, you know, but it's the like high quality, really good mm -hmm. stuff. Um, all right, next. This is one that I'm actually not going to be selling. I might put it on my Instagram or something like that. Um, but because this is a bootleg Nike, but I wanted to show it because I think it's awesome. Uh, this is on a jerseys tag. This is not vintage, uh, but it's embroidered and it's Nike. It's got the scream knife on it. And so this is definitely bootleg. Um, I might throw it up on my other um, platforms, but just not on uh, eBay. Uh, because Nike is pretty, does pretty much jump on stuff. And I don't think they really care about the distinction of bootleg versus, um, is there a hole in my shirt? <laughs> She's poking the hole in my shirt. Uh, I don't think they really, they're not like Gucci, uh, who I don't think really cares about um, bootleg stuff. Yeah, Nike's I like chance it with Nike. bootleg uh, or counterfeit, either one. But to me, the bootleg stuff is cool. They're not, they, nobody thinks that this is a real Nike uh, shirt, but it's just really cool because it's got the whole horror thing. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what I do with it, but I wasn't going to pass it up. It's a nice big size, 2X. All right, so this is one I did quite a lot of work on. Um, this I got at the bins last week, and it was being washed, so I didn't show it in our haul last week. But this is vintage 90s, uh, Back to the Future. 
It is Universal Studios, so it probably was when that uh, ride first came mm -hmm. out at Universal Studios. It is a big size uh, Ringer T. It's probably like a 2XL. When I got it at the bins, what I want to tell you, this thing was filthy. It looked like someone changed the oil in their car with it and like dragged it around the shop floor and yeah. then threw it in the bins. And I took it anyway. It was stinky. It was dirty. It was nasty. Yeah. I treated it three different times with stain stuff and scrubbed in the stains and I washed it th twice. And then what we did was we finally, I said, F it, I'm going to bleach it. Because most of the stains came out, but not yeah. enough of them. It was still really obvious. So we threw it in the bleach bath with Katie's stuff. And all it did was it took the ringer. Which the was, it was a dark blue. It was navy blue. And it took that color and made it this rust orange that actually matches the logo. Yeah. I think it looks fine. And, but, it, but the rest of it is totally spotless. It's There's spotless. No Every stain came out of it. And it looks pretty cool. So... I honestly don't even know if this was worth doing all this work. There could be a million of them. I That's haven't cool. looked it up. But, I mean, I'm going to get at least a minimum 40 50 bucks for it. I think I may even list it higher. It just depends on how many there are. Uh, you know, vintage tees and certain vintage tees, you know, they're harder to find in a bigger size. And this True. is a solid, this is a real good 2XL. So, a yep. um, lot of work for something I paid a dollar for, but it was a nice project. True. All right, next up, I actually got this at the Y2K house. Um, and now a lot of it was just basic streetwear stuff, you know, like the South Pole, the Nike, uh, stuff like that. Um, this was the, one of the few pieces that was actually kind of a cool, um, graphic, uh, thing. This is a sweatshirt and this is from, it's Scooby-Doo. I like Scooby-Doo. It is Scooby -Doo. from 2003. So this is, as I said, Y2K. If you look, if you look at the tag for anybody who doesn't know this, you'll see on these tags, oh, I can't hang on to this. You'll see on this, see how it says, um, S03. Uh, that is the year 2003. So this is a Y2K. Um, it had some schmutz on it. I washed it. It, it probably looks great. came from Walmart, and the S meant seasonal because a lot of these Looney Tunes and Scooby Doo things that yep. you find come from Walmart. Betty Boop, all that. But this is in great condition. It came perfectly clean. Um, it's Scooby Doo, who is it's very popular, uh, and um, you know I should be able to get 40 to 50 bucks for this. It's just super cool, and I paid 17 cents for it. What? <laughs> All right, Katie found this for me. I think this this uh, at the bins yes. and just handed it to me. Now, based on this tag, I'm thinking this is late 70s, early 80s. I'm not super familiar with this tag. I'll have to do a little bit of research, but not tons. Uh, it's not really going to affect the value too, too much. But this is a nice suede jacket. It's like a little suede sweat jacket. It has some damage to it for sure. It has Soft. a couple of spots, and it has a little pit hole under one arm that looks like a bite or something i don't know what the heck bit it but it's really super soft suede and it's like a suede blazer it's very soft unstructured um i'll probably list it for around 75 dollars or so and and i would expect to get anything over 50. it's like i said it's not in super phenomenal condition but it's a really nice casual unstructured suede blazer and those do sell very well if you get a good color um yeah so yeah all right, so you know, going back to the whole hoodie thing, uh, sweatshirts and hoodies, they are really big in streetwear. And you know from our video last week, you know, uh, you never know when something's gonna be worth a lot or if it's, you know, there's so many like current streetwear brands and different things that are out there that are worth a lot of money that maybe you've never heard of or you don't know anything about. So sometimes when something looks interesting, it's always a good idea to look it up if you can. Um, and so I saw this at the bins. I didn't even have to wash this. It's in great condition for being light color. Um, it says PSA on the front. It feels unworn. Yeah, and it's and it's all embroidered here. It says what you think about all day is what you end up manifesting. Choose your thoughts accordingly. So it's just kind of cool. And then on the back, it has upside down. On the back, it says Mayfair PSA. So you can see it's upside down. The tag on it, there is no tag on it up top, but there is a little tag down here. Um, it says just as independent trading company, which is kind of a um, just another one of those blanks. So somebody created these and put them on those tags. Um, but I did look this up and I was able to find a lot of different comps and I didn't go super deep into it, but I should be able to sell this for anywhere from 50 to 75 at least. And it's supposed to be upside down in the back? That wasn't yes. why it was in the bins? It wasn't like a no. misprint? No. All right. Um, and so, yeah, so just something like this. It's just a random weird hoodie that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna look this up and it's definitely worth buying for probably the $3 that it cost me. All right, so those of you that are Seinfeld fans may uh, recognize this name, but it's um, it's Jay Peterman Company. Hey. So Elaine worked for Jane Peterman. Jay Peterman Jay Catalog. Peterman, Jay Peterman Catalog, which is what this is. 
Uh, so the J. Peterman catalog is, is an actual uh, brand of higher end, like middle-aged women clothing, so to speak. This is uh, a bin spine. It's a really large size and it is the super heavyweight linen, uh, again, unstructured blazer type jacket. Uh, it's an, it buttons down the front. It's, it's almost like a tunic jacket. Got it at the bins. There's nothing wrong with it. It's white. There's no stains or marks or wear or anything like that. It's probably something I'll list for like $75. Um, they do have some beautiful clothing in that catalog, in those catalogs, and they still make it and they still sell it. I wouldn't say it's vintage. I don't think it's vintage. Um, I'll do a little bit of a dive on it and I should be able to figure out at least like what year it came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, Google Lens is a beautiful thing yeah. these days. So I think we're all hoodies from here on out, guys. Um, I got, so at that same garage sale, I got a bunch of, I got probably like five or six Nike hoodies. Um, I just grabbed this one to show you. This one is actually a fleece hoodie. Oh, it's soft. It's really soft. It's got the little swoosh down here. Um, and it says Nike established 1971. It's on that gray Y2K tag. Uh, it's a size XL and it's I in like fantastic condition. I may, I may have to steal this. Yeah, part. it's not happening. We'll um, this is one of the, no, it's not happening. This is one of the more valuable pieces uh, that I got there. What are there. you saying? I'm not worth it? I'm saying you have a ton of clothes <laughs> and you're just going to wear this around the house. You're not getting it. It's true. Um, anyway, uh, so this one, I had looked it up and I think somewhere around the $75 mark would be where I'd be able to get it. I actually have two of this exact same one, but one of them, they cut it off. So it's like a, a crop top one. So whatever, I don't know how much I'll sell that one for, but I also got a couple of like just plain Nike hoodies that have small swoosh, not in the center. They're like off to the side, um, but still Y2K, they should do well. And I got like a bunch of other fleece um, hoodies and uh, jackets basically. Tommy Hilfiger, it was a 90s Tommy Hilfiger in there. There was a bum equipment one in there. That was the one I found. Uh, that was the one you saw. Um, so there was like a whole bunch of them not even showing you. And again, 17 cents a piece. I probably should have grabbed some of them, but I was like, holding something from another garage sale down the street so I wasn't really yeah. looking through nope. the clothes like her so she got them all sorry man um anyway just really really cool pieces uh all from uh y2k I'm loving it loving it all right I just have three more I think you have just three we should, more. yeah we should be down um okay this was a bins find now when you think of Carhartt we all know Carhartt is super uh popular right now but it is the older Carhartt it's the blanket lined Carhartt that's There's the stuff that's the ones. most popular specific ones that are doing a lot however if you find good Carhartt clothing and jackets you should not be leaving them behind at the bins just because they're current because they still sell and they sell for good money because retail pricing on Carhartt is very high and uh as far as workwear and outdoor wear uh people will wear this stuff to death that being said this is a newer Carhartt item this is just a storm tech carhartt jacket nobody it's wanted nice. this at the bins um everybody was throwing it around but this is a really good size modern jacket that i can get about 75 dollars for it has the hood it's good for outdoor it probably work. sells for a lot new it probably sells for like 150 new and this is like i think it's an extra large yeah it's a men's extra large which is a good size so i washed it didn't really even need to be washed but i washed it so like I paid maybe five dollars because it isn't super light, but five dollars into seventy five is worth it all day long. Very very nice. All right, next up, my pendle ultimate item. Uh, this is a polo Ralph Lauren zip up hoodie. It's a nice red. Um, it is an extra large, and uh, yeah, I was actually this is actually yeah polo jeans. Um, I have not looked up what this particular um, like style is going for right now. Some of the polo stuff. I mean, Ralph Lauren, even as there's ebbs and flows within like streetwear and what's popular or not, polo tends to kind of hold steady. Ralph Lauren tends to hold steady and it'll have times where it explodes and it's worth a ton. And then times where it just kind of like averages out, but it's never like... Well, and the polo sport is always like late 90s, early 2000s. Yes. But it's, it's never gone the way of like Tommy Hilfiger where people were like really into it for a while and then completely over it Tanked. and then it'll come back again. This, this always holds relatively steady. So again, I have not looked this up. I don't know. It's a good size. It's a nice zip up. And who doesn't love a zip up hoodie? I like to regulate my temperature. Pullover hoodies are lame. Um, so I'm just going to say, guessing, I'm guessing I should be able to get 50 bucks for it, if not more, but I'll have to look it up. But like I said, polo is always going to kind of hold its value to a certain degree other than the crazy times where it just goes, it pops off like nuts. All right. So these last two items came from my uh, large purchase from a vintage seller that closed out her shop in Portland. 
and I just wanted to highlight these. They just got listed this week. There's so much stuff from that haul I never showed you guys because, I, like I said, I bought like 500 pieces. I think I showed you 30 of them maybe. But this is a vintage Laura Ashley. So Laura Ashley still makes clothing. Uh, made in the USA or made in the UK are the older ones. This is made in the UK. So this is probably an 80s, maybe even an early 90s. It's just got this really cute muted floral print with the drop waist in the front. So it's got like this little flutter short sleeves, drop V waist, but then what it has on the bottom is this really nice full skirt. In fact, I love this style of dress so much. I wish this fit me because I probably would have kept it. And it has pockets, pockets. Um, but it's, it is very small. It's like a size six. I, could, I couldn't fit into a size six if I tried. Um, but it's really pretty. So I think I have this listed for about $100 and I should get close to that for it. Um, I love it. Nice. Yeah, so I have $2 into that, by the way. I paid, on average, $2 for all of those items. Okay, usually have them. Um, yeah, this is my yeah. last item. Kind of ties them together. And then this also came from her. Um, her name is Chrissy. Her, her uh, company is Red Cake Recycle. And this is just an Ann Klein. Not a, uh, I, normally I don't pick up Ann Klein, even though it used to be a higher-end department store brand. But this is one because of the type of dress it is. They're very similar in style. So it's got these big like roses on it. The top of this is like t-shirt knit. And then the bottom is a full uh, crispy like cotton full skirt. Just really cute, super pretty like springtime, very feminine, romantic style dresses. And those are all words that I use in the title or in the themes. Feminine, romantic, uh, florals, uh, spring. Those are all like popular things right now. People are looking for, you know, all those summer t-shirts, but they're also looking for pretty spring dresses. The, like lots of girly girls will pull yep. those out now. Yep. So that'll probably list about $75. All right. My last two things, uh, like I said, we were at that house and I found the South Pole t-shirt and no jeans were there. But then I started going through all these hoodies and that's where I probably made my best score of the day. Um, possibly the week I actually found two South Pole hoodies and here's the thing we're talking about doing looking at the sell-through and the pricing on South Pole jeans I would say those are the most popular of, of the South Pole brand right now um, but probably second is gonna be hoodies I went and looked and the sell-through on hoodies is actually really good it's not as crazy as the pants but it's still really good and the prices i am fairly certain i should be able to sell each of these hoodies for at least a hundred dollars and again remember i paid 17 cents a piece for them uh, or rather victoria spent 17 bucks a piece on them or sorry 17 cents um so here's the first one and again really nice um sizes this is a 2xl um and it's got uh all this going on on the front of it um and it's nice big size nice gray this is a pullover one I Heavy, think thick, clean. Yep, really nice. Um, so I do think I should be able to sell this for at least a hundred. Uh, it's even got like that double layer hoodie hood. Now I will say the one thing going against me is like Vicky's talking about how it's spring going into summer. Um, so some of this stuff's probably going to move a little slower. I'm going to have to get more bins because I, I'm I do not have space for all these hoodies. Um, they take up a lot of space. Uh, but I'm still super excited about this one. And then this one's even cooler. This is a, a zip up one. And this is, a, it says 4X, which seems ridiculous. I don't know. I haven't measured it. Um, but this one is really cool because it's like, like the gold. gold. I was like the gold. Yep, it's zipper. got gold. It's got like a, a gold chain that hangs down for the Oh my the God, pole. that's so gaudy. Yeah, so gaudy. Uh, it's just the red and the gold off the black really pops. It's a nice big size, big oversize. You know, it's all about the oversize. So it's not necessarily somebody who is size 4X or whatever the measurements can turn out to be. No, these t-shirt bros are all tall and skinny young men and they're wearing stuff like 17 sizes too big. So, well, it's just like, just like the good old days when I was in high school in the nineties. Um, anyway, so I think this one's probably going to be more likely to sell for even more than the gray one. Uh, it's just a really cool hoodie, but seriously crazy. And so 40 pieces at the bins for me. 30 pieces out garage sailing. I think I had like 36 pounds at the bins. Um, so I spent like around uh, like 60 or so dollars. And then the $5, so if I was actually paying that $5, uh, I basically paid like just under a dollar an item. Um, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy to have. And for me, I do 10 items a day on eBay, 10 listings a day on eBay. So that's like a whole week's worth of inventory for 65 bucks. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think this week I spent I spent sixty five dollars at the bins, and then I spent a hundred dollars at garage sales. 
So $165. And this is not enough stuff for me for a week, but I still have quite a few yeah. pieces that I'm listing from my big buyouts. Um, and again, like I said, I spent up on two items. Mm -hmm. You know, I paid $50 for the pachinko machine. I paid $40 for that St. John purse. That's $90 of it right there. Yep. Um, and I would not normally do that. But that $90, I hope to turn into a minimum of $500. Yeah. So, well, then we're heading to Texas, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to. I'm hoping at like minimum 100 pieces. Um, I, but honestly, I don't know what it's like there. I don't we'll know what it's like there. So we're about we, to find we're out. We're going to find out. So I guess stay tuned because our next haul videos are all going to be about Texas. All about Texas. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> oh, it's been a while. Since I know, it's been, been a while. It's been a while. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.